Well, good morning. Boy, what, a, what an awesome time of worshiping God today. Amen? Just like, yeah, yeah, just letting our hearts go out uh, to God in love and, and to be captivated uh, by Him. I'm so, so excited about, about who He is, right? I hope that, that sometimes excitement just breaks out on your face for who God is, right? Like on Monday morning. There's a miracle right there, right? By letting God just be who he, who he is intended to be uh, for you. So I, I really want to encourage uh, any and all of you, uh, come uh, Thursday night as we uh, are going to focus in our, our prayer time just on healing prayer. We'll talk about it a little bit, and then we're just going to pray uh, for people's needs. Maybe you need healing in, uh, in, your, in your soul, right? Do You know, a lot, of, a lot of people have soul sickness. Like, they're just not well deep in their core, right? And then there's, there's body sickness, and then there's mental, you know, maybe maybe you, maybe some mental stuff, some struggle you have going on, or maybe maybe there's just some stinking thinking going. Anybody familiar? Right? Just turn to the person next to you and say, you are familiar with that stinking thinking, right? No. Like, so uh, healing, healing for maybe, maybe just healing in our, maybe your faith needs healed, Right? And we're, we'll talk about uh, some of that that pertains to that today. But just this matter of just letting, um, yeah, really letting the reality of Jesus' life into every part of our lives and ask bold prayers, right? I, I seriously doubt that when we get to heaven, God will say, you know, you just basically you had too much faith. Nobody's going to hear that, right? It's more uh, are going to be along the line. Now, why, what, what, why didn't you believe, right? Uh, here, let me show you. Let me show you all that, uh, that I have for you, right? Amen. So it's good. So welcome back. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. I'm excited about uh, this new series that I'm doing called Amplified. And today we're just going to jump right into the scripture that is uh, centered in, in uh, Peter's letter. Uh, the Apostle Peter, who a uh, follower of Jesus Christ, Oftentimes you find him referred to in, in the story of Jesus along with, uh, uh, you know, Peter, James, and John. Uh, you know, he's famous for a lot of things. Like he's, he's famous for his confession of who Jesus is. He's famous for rebuking Jesus and correcting Jesus, which, you know, never goes very well when you do that. Uh, he's famous for getting out of the boat and walking on the water. He's famous for um, denying Jesus right at the moment that Jesus needed him to stand true. <laughs> and he also will tell you that uh, he is so <laughs> thankful that Jesus uh, invited him for a walk on the beach after the resurrection where Jesus completely uh, let it be known clearly to him that he had forgiven him and restored him and has a great and wonderful future for him. So Peter's life is actually a great encouragement to all of us who understand what failure, what weakness, what sin uh, what imperfection looks like, right? Anybody here understand that? But here is Jesus intersecting the life of Peter and making a huge difference in his life. And so when he writes about, uh, about faith in Christ and about what Jesus brings to us and about what we're called into, you kind of know it's just coming out of this, uh, like, like this authentic life that has been lived, experiencing Jesus in all the ups and downs, right? And I'm, I'm glad Jesus with us, is with us for the whole, the whole way. Amen? The whole way. And uh, we have so much, so much to give thanks for. So we're going to read, again, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read uh, verses 1 through 9. And then we're going to read 13 through uh, 16. I'm actually going to read this out of the, pa- out of the message uh, uh, translation. So, you know, follow along with what you have. It's, it's copied for you in the YouVersion app today. And you may follow along. And so it goes like this. I, Peter, am an apostle on assignment by Jesus, the Messiah, writing to exiles scattered to the four winds. Not one is missing, not one forgotten. God the Father has his eye on each of you and has determined by the work of his spirit to keep you obedient through the sacrifice of Jesus. May everything good from God be yours. Amen. Right? You know what amen means? That means... So it is, or so be it, or true. That's true, right? It's kind of like a cheer, right? It's kind of like a cheer. It's not like the closing of a prayer, amen. Like, it's not a period. Amen is an exclamation mark. It's kind of like, yes, 
It is true, right? What a God we have. And how fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And that future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. The day, of, uh, the day is coming when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. You never saw him, yet you love him. You still don't see him? Yet you trust him. With laughter and singing, because you kept on believing, you'll get what you're looking forward to, total salvation. Verse 13. So, roll up your sleeves. Put your mind in gear. Be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then, but you do now. And as obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. For God said, I am holy, so you be holy too. Woo. All right. So I'll, I don't know. If you just live in this like for the next 12 months, you'll probably still just be uh, beginning. Uh, something pretty amazing. This is like, these are incredible words. So I just want to encourage you, in your group life studies this week, in your meeting uh, with your community, in your, your own personal study, just like, just dive in. Just look at this. Just, listen, just ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. He loves to teach you things about Jesus. He loves to teach you about, his, about the life you have in Christ. Because most of us don't believe it, right? But he loves to teach us this, and it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. So this is written like to the followers of Jesus, strangers and sojourners, right? So if you, you look at those first verses, it just says, it says that, like you are exiles scattered, right, throughout. Like, so, but you've been chosen, but you're scattered here and there. Let me give you a picture. Let me show you a map of, of where, um, where the, it was talking about. See, see that area of Turkey right there, right in the middle? That's, that's all that's modern-day Turkey, but this is where all these other areas were, right? Those that are, it says, it says that they were scattered throughout the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. That's the area that he's, that he's writing about, right? Turkey, modern-day Turkey. He's writing to believers that were there. That's where they were, okay? And they were experiencing all kinds of persecution. There's a great deal of difficulty going on in their lives because they were followers of Christ, they probably were like shaken a little bit by some of the things that were going on. And so he writes them to assure them, to encourage them in what they've received in Jesus Christ, right? So there's believers that lived there at that time. And, and the next map shows believers that live here in the Puget Sound. All right, that's you. Where, where do you live in the Puget Sound, right? That, that's, that's where we live, right? So we who are scattered like seeds in the nations or... As, as in, throughout the Puget Sound, right, in, in, in your life. I, I, just, I put these maps up here because I want you to know that this word, this scripture, although it's written to them, it's the word of God for all of the people of God. And so this is a word for you as well. Wherever you live here, whatever you're experiencing in those places, that you live. See, this, this is to you, and you are... He says, like, we are like exiles, or really it's like strangers. In other words, we kind of have, we have this dual citizenship that's going on. Uh, we, we belong here. I mean, we're, we're here. This is the land in which we live, right? We belong to this community. Uh, we live under this government and all that stuff. But there's something else going on as well. We, we live, we, we, belong, we have citizenship someplace else too, right? We have citizenship with God because of what God has done. We have a citizenship in heaven that makes us, uh, members of the kingdom of God. In other words, the way the culture around us lives out it, its life is distinctly uh, other than the way we are to live out our lives as citizens of God's kingdom, of what God is doing in the world, right? And so 
There's like a disconnect, right? There's, there's this culture in which we live, and then there's this, this counterculture of the followers of Jesus who are like infusing light into the darkness, infusing love into the indifference. In, in, they are infusing um, truth <laughs> with love into places that are just, just messed over because, you know, there's, just, there's so many definitions of what truth is, right? And so here, we, so here we live generously, graciously, confidently, hopefully, into this culture, right? So when people listen to us, they should not be able to say that we sound just like someone who is not a follower of Jesus, or they should not say that we sound like just someone who is just religious and is just really mad. <laughs> we, we should not sound like that, right? So we're, we're citizens of a, of a different kingdom. And that creates, some, uh, that, that creates some tension, right? And that's actually where some of the persecution arose later on. And we'll talk about it in the series later on in October. But that's where the tension arose a little bit. And he says, hey, if you suffer, let it be for suffering as an actual follower of Christ, not just because you're obnoxious and mean-spirited or because you've done something wrong. Look. Let's don't, let's don't suffer for those. Don't, don't suffer in that way and say, oh, I'm just suffering for Jesus because you're not. You're suffering because you're being like, not like Christ, right? But here he says he calls us into, to live out this counter life. And man, it's, it's, a, it's a big difference, right? This, this counter life that we're, that we're called to, to live into. Um, we're to bring it, like we're to, we're to bring, you know, the, the, the presence and the ministry of Jesus just right into our world. Um, man, three examples from this past week. So um, one I was a part of, um, sitting down uh, at Starbucks and uh, having a meeting with, with uh, one of our, the men in our congregation and just kind of meeting together and encouraging one another. And, and I, I see this woman um, that I know, uh, not well, never had very much conversation at all with her. But this woman walks in, and the first thing I think when I look at her, I'm just thinking, man, she looks like so sad today. Just like hit me, you know? Know nothing about her life. She just looks so sad. As it turned out, we had like a divine appointment conversation uh, with her uh, just like like probably about 20 minutes later. Uh, and uh, she comes by, and, and, and we, there's just, uh, we just have some quick conversation. I just ask her, um, I say, how... Uh, Hey, I would just, I don't know, I just feel like I want to, is there any way that I can pray for you, right? And um, she said, like, you mean, like, for my business or for me? I said, yeah, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. She said, well, I guess I could always use some, uh, some help from a higher force, right? And I, you know, and, and, and so then she just shared about her business, and I go, okay, good. And she said, oh, uh, and one other thing, and then she started crying. And she says, my father died three days ago, and I'm just wondering, maybe you could pray for me about that too. So, you, you know, I mean, there are ways to look at people, right? And, and God is wanting us to see things. Even, and, and like, I didn't know what I was to see until there's this conversation and what I was to see was revealed, right? But then, then I said, I will do that. And I said, I, ha I have a name for that higher force, and I'm going to pray to him, <laughs> right? And it's the beginning of, I believe, will be many conversations. Uh, there was a, a young man who left our, our service last week, and as he was going home, he saw, a, um, he saw a woman picking up trash. And as the woman was picking up, picking up trash, he was just captivated after coming from worship. I think it's just so cool, coming from worship, then this this. There's just something was happening in him, and he, and he turned, and he um, decided that I want to go back and talk to her. I went back and talked to her, and, and, you know, what are you doing? I'm just, like, picking up trash, and the conversation at some point says, well, why are you picking up trash? Because so many bad things are happening in my life. I thought I would try to do something good in order to open up some good things to happen in my own life. And so he said, well, I'll help you. So he went home, got gloves, got trash bags, and spent a couple hours with her picking up trash. And listening to the story. What, what, what is that? What is that? That's like counter, like that's, that's countercultural, right? You, you don't even have to connect all the dots all in the first time. But the whole point is that that is just like 
entering into. So uh, another guy calls me uh, during uh, Friday and says, oh, by the way, I just want to tell you what happened. I was driving up to the, the, to the, to the, you know, the drive through window at Jack in the Box, and uh, I was being served by um, a, a, young, a young man, and uh, as, as uh, I was finishing up uh, all that exchange, you know, and paid, uh, he said, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you because you are the first person today who has been kind to me. You're the first person today who has been kind to me, Right? And you have been encouraging, and you have smiled, and I just want to thank you because it's been a very hard day. Don't you think there probably ought to be a difference in the way that we exchange and interact with people in our world, right? So all along the way, there becomes something different that we uh, are, are engaged in because what we, we're citizens. We're citizens of a of a different kingdom. We're just not hacked off religious people, angry at the status quo or, or filled with fear and hopelessness and filled with offense because people aren't following Jesus. No, no, we, there's, there's just something different about our lives. And so he talks about what that difference is in order to encourage them. And what he says simply is this, in order that their lives really become, you know, amplifications, amplifying out the good news of Jesus he, he says this, like you, you saw those first, the first verse we talked about last week. He says that you are called, you are, you are the chosen of God, called according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit for obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus over your life. It's just the beautiful, somewhat mysterious statements, but uh, it's so good. So last week we talked about this, that it was God's will for you to have, you know, an intimate, right, dependent, personal relationship with God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you are not only to hold the belief, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I believe in the three in one. It's not just a cognitive, uh, you know, doctrine. It's not just a doctrine, a cognitive belief. It is like you are entering into the experience of God as your Abba Father and the Holy Spirit as your personal guide and and. And, and, and Lord and, and bringer of liberty into your life and with Jesus Christ who is also who is this Lord, a covenant God who is releasing his life, his resurrection life into you. I mean, so we are invited into uh, this, right? And I think I have a slide for that actually, right? It desires each of us to have an intimate, dependent, and personal relationship with God. Father, the Father, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He just wants that, right? So I just want to let you know, man, this is like at the foundation of who we are. This is this personal relationship. I, I know, I know, like, people are trying to find ways to talk about him, right? A higher force, you know, a higher power, you know, the big, you know, the, 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 you know, you know, the guy in the sky, or, you know, whatever. But here's the deal. He's not just that. He's like he's revealed himself. He wants a personal relationship with you. I mean, he wants to enjoy you. you. He wants you to enjoy him. He wants you to step into this, right? And there's just so much to explore. Now, here's, here's something else that comes out of this. God then has called you, he has called you, has chosen you to, to belong, to believe, and to become. Now, this, like, this is a like huge piece here. He has called you to, to belong. God the Father has chosen you. By the foreknowledge of God the Father, you, you are chosen. God has chosen you. This, this is not your work. This, you didn't choose him first. He chose you, right? And, and here's the deal. Like, this is God's attitude toward the people he has created. He says, I, my, my choosing power, my choosing grace is flowing toward my creation. I am choosing you. I am choosing you. I am choosing you. I know, I know you. I know your life is a mess. I'm choosing you. I know that you don't believe in me. I am choosing you. I know that you could care less. I'm choosing you. I know you keep trying to do it on your own. I'm choosing you. I know you feel like you're unworthy. I am choosing you. 
I am Jesus. We pick this up from the stories of Jesus. When Jesus is talking about how there's this king who is going to hold this great banquet, right? Or maybe a wedding feast. There's several of the stories he tells. And he says, hey, go tell everybody it's ready. And uh, the ones that, that he sends out the invitation to, you know what they say? They say, I'm sorry, I can't come. And I'm just like, seriously, man, my life is just so busy. I just don't have time to come. I bought some land I got to go look at. I bought, I bought a new car. I got to go try it out. Actually, it was oxen in those days. Uh, I got to go try it out. Or he says, uh, you know, I just got married. You know, I can't come. Everybody knows the family responsibilities. You know, you got kids, and we're doing all kinds of important things. And I, we, I, I just can't come. They all turned down his invitation. He chose them, though. He chose them. He still chose them. And you know what he said? He said, hey, man, they're just showing that they're not worthy of it. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to all the people, all the people that weren't on the list, your first list. I want you to go. I want you to go into the, I want you to go down the alleyways. I want you to go down the back roads. I want you to go under the bridges. And I want you to invite the crippled, the lame, the broken. I want you to invite them because I want my banquet filled with people who want to be there. Pretty awesome, huh? So he chose, he, he chose us. He chose us to belong. And you may choose not to. You may say, I'm not going, but he chose you to belong. It's just absolutely a beautiful thing. You're chosen to belong. And then, and then you're chosen to believe. And you see, you're chosen and, 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 and to, to belong to him through the working of the sanctifying working of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is just like enlivening you, just waking you up. See, it's just like, when, when God's Holy Spirit, and when you, when you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm choose, you choose me, God, I'm choosing you, <laughs> right? Whoa, you're choosing me? Well, if you're choosing me, I'm choosing you. And then what happens right at that moment is that God, the Holy Spirit, just begins to awaken you, man. You're, the, part, the, the parts in your life that have been dead, they start coming alive. The th- the, you know, all, all the places, right, where they're just like, where there's so much, so much chaos, right? You bring my chaos back into order. Like the Holy Spirit, like, begins to cr- make a new creation of you, right? And then all this is for the obedience to Jesus Christ. Now, this is the becoming. The becoming happens, the transformation happens as you and I are obeying Christ, as we are responding to Jesus. So when God calls you into, into this relationship with him, and then you see what he wants, what he desires of you, and you begin to o- actually obey him, actually do that. Like he says, hey, I want you to trust me. I know it's really hard. Trust me. And you say, God, it is really hard, but I do that. That's obedience. I do choose to trust you. I'm going to trust you right now. I know it doesn't make any sense. I hate what's going on, but I'm going to trust you. Or God says to you, you know it is God's will for you, right, in Jesus, to forgive those who have offended you. And you say, oh, man. Really, am I ha- do I have to do that? No, you don't have to do that. But if you want to become, if you want to become what, I have, what I've designed you to be, then just follow me here. Get, come on, give me what I want and give me, give me what you need. <laughs> and that is forgive those who have offended you, right? And you just begin to follow God and, and you begin to actually obey. Then there's just, then this becoming happens. This becoming happens. So that, that I mean, that's what we're really after, Right? We, we don't want, this, this, the, the world is not better off to have a bunch of people who sort of believe the right things. The world is better off when the people who believe in this amazing God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and what he's done for us, when they actually start responding to him and allow his life to shape their lives. So this is like amazing, right? And this is, this is how we begin to live out our, our own citizenship. There's, a, there's another way in which it's spoken about. It's spoken about in this way. You have been born again into a living hope. You have been born again into a living hope. Or you have been given new birth into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, that is so, this is like, this is such a dynamic event. That is like, it's, it's like being born again. Now, I'd like for you just to dismiss all the times you said, I'm born again. Because no, many times, no matter how many times you say it, if you're not living into it, it's just, it's just words. But when Peter talks about it, it is a reality. You are not your old identity. You know, you, you are being shaped into something brand new. You know, we live in a world that's just filled with uh, offense and hopelessness, Right? 
most everybody that you meet, talk about certain subjects, everybody's offended, and then a lot of people are hopeless. But, but we've been born into something different. I, I haven't read the book. Evidently, there's a book entitled, I read, I read the review on it, but it's entitled, I've Seen the Future I'm, and I'm Not Going. <laughs> Uh, I've seen the future and I'm not going. Okay, so a lot of times that's how we feel in our lives. I've seen don't don't talk to I I've seen the future and I I'm not going. And there are a lot of people actually, and I don't think this is what the book is about, but they actually check out and they decide not to go. So they become absolutely passive, or they or they or they become destructive to themselves or to others in some way. Our, the culture in which we live is characterized by hopelessness. And the way we express our helplessness is that we, we complain and we are, um, we are angry rather than learning how to allow the desire for justice to actually translate into holy energy to bring the love of God and the power of God to bear upon our culture. It's a lot easier to be just reactive than it is to be purposefully obedient to Jesus. And so he says, you've been, listen, this is, this is you. This is your, this is your life. You have been born again into a living hope. You have been. You have, you've been given a new birth into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I like what one writer said. Becoming a Christian means that God did what God did for Jesus at Easter, he does for you in the very depth of your being. He raises you from the dead. Woohoo! Time to party, right? Give thanks to God. Wow. Seriously? That, that's, yes. By the resurrection of Jesus. And it's by his mercy, like in the muchness of his mercy, yeah, when he sees our misery and desperation, what does he do? He says, you, you have been, you know, you've been, by the mercy of God, you've been raised up with Jesus been, and been born again into a living hope by the mercy of Christ. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Say the word mercy with me. Say mercy. 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 You know, mercy is just a kind way of dealing with people that you see are having a hard time. When God sees us in our misery, he doesn't become offended. He is merciful. I, I, I had this thought came across my mind the other day. A lot of times it has to do with the homeless, and that's all, all a big deal in our area. But I had, I had this thought. Why is it that when we see the desperation of someone else, we become offended? And here's, here's the deal. What if, what if God when he saw your desperation, he just got offended. What if, what if he just walked away and said, I can't believe you're living like that. Are you kidding me? You know, what if he just said, you start cleaning up, I'm going to care about you. God doesn't do that. God, God acts in mercy. Mercy is the kindness of God in response to the huge need of desperation that he sees within our lives. One of the greatest gifts that you can ever receive in your own life is to believe that you are desperate for what God has to give. So by, by mercy, by, by mercy, is that like, some, it's just like, oh God, thank you that you, by your mercy, you've given us a, a living hope, right? It, it's, a, it's, it's living, it, it grows, it increases. It's an intense, confident expectation, or as we've quoted before, hope is the confident expectation of good. And you've been given a living hope, and you have been brought into an inheritance. Kept in heaven for you. So there's more to come, but you already get to enjoy it. Before my father passed away, like years ago, he would like, sometimes he would write a, a, a check to our family, you know, uh, and just say, when he was getting more toward retirement, he'd write a little check, and he'd say, he'd, like one day he sent us five, $500, you know. This is just part of the inheritance I'm giving to you now. I thought that was really great. I messed with his mind a little bit because I, I called him up. And I said, hey, Dad, thank you so much for the, for the check. He says, well, you're welcome. I said, man, I really appreciate the $5,000. <laughs> he was really quiet on the other end because he said, did I, put, did I put an extra zero there? I did not mean to, right? 
But here's the deal. Our good father, our father, is constantly deposited into our lives the inheritance that is to come. We get to enter into it now, man. And what we're receiving as we're faithful to him is the, is the salvation of our souls, right? The total, so, so the, all the salvation that is coming our way, we just keep receiving it, man, in installments and down payments. Not only in the forgiveness of sins, but in the healing of our lives, healing of our hearts, the deepening of our faith, the, you know, just the joy that we're having in him, greater liberty, greater freedom. I'm, I'm just, I just hope that you're more free today than you were uh, three months ago. I hope you're more free today than you were five years ago. I hope that you, you're just standing before God and you're going, oh my goodness, God, I can't believe how good you are to me. Okay. Even though, in the present time, you have to go through various trials. He says that too. See, it's very, all very realistic here. Something that's happening is greater than your suffering, right? What, what, what he is really saying by this is that this, this whole business of being born into a living hope it, it is sustainable, right? In all of this, verse 6, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief of all kinds. But these have come so that your proven, the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus is revealed. I, here's, see, it's your faith God wants. See, it's, it's, it's your faith. See, that's... When it's all said and done, what's happened to your faith? That's, that's a, I just want to ask that of you. What's happened to your faith? Do you, does faith mean anything, right? I mean, actually, does it mean anything? That, are you aware that, that you have been born again into this living hope? And that when trials come and, and difficulty and disappointment, you know, come your way. Are you able to say, I choose to believe you, Jesus that what you are doing in me is for real, even in the face of what's going on, right? I, I used to have this statement, and I think I'm kind of reclaiming it again. Let everything that happens to you drive you more deeply into Jesus Christ. So where, is it drive, where, where have things happened to you that have driven you away from God? Where is that? Well, then, then call it. Call it out because, because that... <laughs> Your faith, the faith that God is depositing in you, the faith that's being kept for you, guarded in you, is not flimsy, it's not weak, and it is strong enough, it is sustainable. It's a sustainable relationship with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the times that are most dire and challenging. I will never forget, Jim Schmick over here took uh, me and a num number of other leaders to Uganda in 2003. I'll never forget this. And as I was studying this, I thought about Paula or Pauline. I can't remember exactly her name. I was just looking at some pictures the other day of her. She is a 70, at that time was a 74-year-old grandmother who was caring for her grandkids because all of her children, their parents, had died of AIDS. And so she was caring for all of them. And the oldest of the grandchild had just contracted the HIV virus because, because she was promised soap, 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 in exchange for sex by a man and contracted the HIV virus. And that grandmother, in talking to us about that and telling her story through a translator, all of a sudden, in the midst of her grandchildren, this little, little woman of just a very small stature but great praise stood up and began to dance and sing praise to God for all that he has done for her. And I sat there feeling like a pygmy in my faith. Your faith, your faith. This faith that God is working in you, it is sustainable. It is powerful. And so he says, listen, listen. There's stuff going on. It's hard. But let me tell you this. <laughs> it will all be proved genuine. I just want you to know. When you face various trials, just praise be to God who has had mercy on you, who will sustain you, and who has given you the goal of your faith, which is the total salvation of your life. Amen? Now, that's a different story, right? That's a different narrative. That's the narrative of those who are called to belong and to believe and to become 
like the Lord Jesus Christ. This incredible note of joy. Okay. So what are you going to do with this? How shall we respond to these kinds of things? Peter writes, he says this in verse uh, 13. I'll find it again. So roll up your sleeves. Put your mind in gear. Be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, just doing what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then, but you do now. As obedient children, let yourself, let your, take off the brakes. Take off the brakes, folks. Come on. Let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy. You be holy too. Let me call you to this. Do you have a robust view of your faith and your relationship with Jesus? Is it of this caliber that Peter's talking about? If not, then I urge you to repent. Change your mind. Choose to believe what God says. All right? Just start there. And you just say that to God. I repent. I've been such an idiot. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Actually, that's a Greek word in the Bible in the New Testament. I, but I've been such a fool. I've been such, oh, what was I thinking? I was just like, oh, I just dumbed this whole thing down so much that I'm just kind of this little cultural Christian that doesn't really have real impact in my world because, you know, I look like everybody, ought, but rather than allowing you to give me that living hope. Second thing I, I challenge you to is be baptized. Be baptized. Be baptized next Sunday <laughs> in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be baptized into this relationship with God that just then becomes the, the basis that, the, you know, like that. You, you can talk about a lot of ways. It becomes the fire from which, from which your life lives with energy. Or, or it becomes a, the fountain, the never-ending springing up of living water out of your life because you believe in him. And you, and you can do that. You can fill out on your I've Decided card, I want to be baptized. You can come and bring it to me afterwards. And I'll, we'll, set, we'll have time. We'll make time this week to get you ready. That's just obedience, right? Because Jesus said to do this. Here's something else you can do, which I think is just embrace your identity. Embrace your identity as, as one who's been born into a living hope. Like, repent of acting like an unbeliever. <laughs> like, well, I believe, but I don't, I don't live like that, right? I, but we all, God is so patient. He's willing to train us and help us. Holy Spirit is there to do sanctifying work, cleansing within us, teaching us how to go ahead and live like a believer. So we repent of that. And, and we just, if you're stuck, just say, God, where am I stuck? Identify that and just say, God, do work right there. Because wherever you're stuck is the place where the Holy Spirit is right now knocking in order to work liberty in your life. Amen. Well, whew. let's take five minutes to at least get our initial response going, okay? So if you want to, I'll ask prayer ministers to come to the front, please, and you'll be, they'll just pray over you. Or you can just come and kneel and pray by yourself. You can just, like, deal with things in your seat. You can fill out that about, you know, I, I've decided to be baptized and We'll do, we'll do this, okay? We'll get this done. Get you, get you on the road <laughs> to reclaiming this faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, let's stand together. What a good day to be present, to rediscover the gifting of God to you in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you. We just pray for liberty and joy and we pray also an urgency upon us that we would like say no to the small-minded way in which we've gone about our, our own understanding and bring us into that larger, grander vision of people who have been born into a new life, a living hope.
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God, do in us what you did for Jesus on Easter. Raise us up from the dead ends and dead ways. We pray. Amen.